We're still waiting. For, we're still waiting for a quorum, um, but we'll do welcome and introductions to start off, and hopefully somebody else will join us. There we go. That's our quorum. So, um, why don't you do roll call, Brian? Certainly, I will um, name off the municipality. If the voting present, voting member present could please state their name. I'll start with our folks who are attending in person. Ulster County. Ed Fine. New York State Department of Transportation. Alexander Johnson. Town of Shongum. John Wall. Town of Rochester. Mike Baden. And going to our voting members online, City of Kingston. John Schultheis. Town of Saugerties. Leanne Thornton. Town of Ulster. Town of Ulster. Jim Quigley. <clears throat> Thank you, Supervisor. And Village of New Paltz. Uh, Neil Batez, uh, proxy member, proxy vote for the village. Thank you. That is our quorum, eight members present. Um, I will run through other attendees. <clears throat> Online, we have, I'm just going to uh, go through the names of uh, attendees. Kristen Wilson from Rural Ulster Preservation Corporation. Peter Cristiano from Barton and the Judas. Chris Kate from McFarland Johnson Incorporated. Amy McKenzie from New the New York State Department of Transportation Region 8. And David Stoss from Ulster County Transportation Council. Other members present whose name I may not have mentioned? Dennis Doyle. Herb Litt. Great. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. We're going to get you a proxy. I've been several times. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, floating. And uh, good morning. I uh, wish you were here because we have some great coffee in Danish. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's enjoying that. Um, so a call for citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments? We have uh, mm -hmm. online Kristen Wilson. Kristen, you have the floor. OK. Um, well, I put my comments up here and they disappeared. So now I've got to <laughs> figure out where they are. OK, here we are. OK, thank you, everyone, for giving me an opportunity to make some citizen comments. This is um, kind of a strange experience having uh, used to represent the city of Kingston. Um, I now left the city of Kingston and I'm in a new role at RUPCO as assistant vice president of community development. So I'd like to talk to you today about a request that I'd like to make to the Ulster County Transportation Council and the, and the New York State DOT to find and designate funding for pedestrian facilities on Route 28 from the pedestrian facility that goes around the roundabout at the throughway I-587 and Washington Avenue um, and ends on the west side of that roundabout. So we'd, we'd like to see pedestrian facilities go from there to at least the driveway entrance of the Quality Inn and at best to the intersection of Forest Hill Drive and Route 28. It's a state route that could be improved to accommodate pedestrians. It does not have any pedestrian facilities right now. There, and there's currently a significant amount of pedestrian traffic on the road uh, because many people who are currently homeless and living at the Motel 19 on Route 28 um, and also at the Skytop Roadway and are walking along the road to get to the grocery store, to get water, to get whatever they need. Um, unfortunately, on December 22nd, 2021, a pedestrian was struck at the intersection of Forest Hill Drive and uh, Route 28 and died. Um, and I, I personally drive the corridor frequently in the winter to and from Bel Air, and I'm regularly surprised on my way back home and worried for pedestrians walking along the road at night in the dark. So uh, as you know, we have a severe housing crisis in Ulster County and in the nation. This APG is... is um, sorry, so uh, Repco is developing a project at the existing Quality Inn to provide permanent housing for formerly homeless people. Um, we're seeking a site plan approval from the Town of Ulster Planning and Town Boards, and they have also expressed concern regarding the pedestrian access on Route 28. Um, just to share a little bit about our projects, we'll be converting the 
um, quality in which is currently a 145 uh, room hotel to 81 units of affordable housing. Um, and it could house up to 220 people, including families and children. Um, the, it will provide permanent housing in the form of studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartments to formerly homeless individuals and families. Um, they, it will target homeless individuals and families currently residing in hotel and motel placements around the county. And we will provide on-site support, um, 24 hour support and case management to residents with serious mental illness, substance use disorders, veterans with honorable discharge, and youth coming out of foster care, as well as victims of domestic violence and chronically homeless. So some of the people who will come to live at the quality and development may ironically have previously lived at the other hotel locations on Route 28. We will be providing bus transportation to the residents of the development and many of them will have cars based on our experience um, and the uh, family of Woodstock's experience 20 to 30% of homeless people do have personal vehicles. However, it's inevitable that maybe some people will need or want to walk into Kingston. Uh, this area on Route 28 was not designed for pedestrians, but it is on the edge of an urban area. And there are currently now facilities, businesses and housing there that are generating pedestrian demand. Uh, I've had some preliminary discussion with Dave Corrigan, resident engineer at DOT, and he indicated that engineering wise, it may be possible to build facilities to at least the quality in driveway intersection. So to I, I you know, humbly request to advance the spirit of the Complete Streets Act of 2011 and New York State DOT's own 2010 pedestrian and bicycle policy to promote pedestrian and bicycle travel for all persons on the state transportation system I think it's necessary that DOT designate funding, design, and construct pedestrian facilities on this section of Route 28 to serve and protect the most vulnerable people in our society. So I hope you will consider my request and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you, Kristen. Any other citizens comments? Hearing none. Uh, item number three on the agenda, approval of the December 15, 2021 policy committee meeting summary. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? So moved, Mike Baden. Thank you, Mr. Baden. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Joe Carey. Communications and announcements, Brian? <clears throat> One announcement I have is regarding the Traffic Safety Board this Thursday at 11 a.m. at the rotunda of the Public Safety Building on Route 32, the jail. Uh, we will be um, hosting a ceremony with the county executive awarding the Ulster County School Bus Driver of the Year, Miss Lisa Haynes from uh, the New Paltz uh, School District. She has over 32 years of driving experience and we're very pleased to be uh, offering that award after a two or three year hiatus uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Um, there is an RSVP. If you are interested in attending, I'm happy to provide that to you. Um, otherwise, the uh, other announcement I have is the uh, certification review process that the Ulster County Transportation Council went through with our Mid Hudson Valley TMA members has been completed. And we did just receive the certification final document uh, just the other day from uh, the Federal Highway and Federal Transit Administrations. Uh, David has that document on the screen now. And that is also posted onto our website uh, and it's available under uh, completed projects. There is one finding, as Dennis and I noted during a previous meeting, that the UCTC does need to update its uh, one table in its long range transportation plan regarding the financial plan uh, portion of the document. So we'll be, begin to address that finding uh, later this year. 
Otherwise, under communications and announcements, I don't have any that come to mind at the moment. Thank you, Brian. Any of the council members have any communications or announcements they wish to make? Hearing none, new business. Item A, UCTC Resolution 2022-03, Amendment of the UCTC Federal Fiscal Year 2020-2024 Transportation Improvement Program to add a new Ulster County Bridge, New York pin 876268 as shown in attachment one. I have a resolution for discussion purposes. Thank you, Mr. Balk. Do I have a second? Mike uh, Baden. Thank you, Mr. Baden. I have a motion and second, Brian. Certainly, this is uh, a new addition to the transportation improvement program. Uh, it did, the, the amendment went out for public comment, 15 day public review and comment period. We received no public comments. <clears throat> it is regarding an award through the Bridge New York program for the replacement of the Trunwood Bridge carrying route, County Route 54 over the Beaver Kill in the town of Hardenburg. Turnwood. 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 Oh, okay. We will update that in the project description. Thank you. <clears throat> the total project cost is $4.3 million with, I believe, a 5% uh, local match. Uh, because it is a Bridge New York project, it is 5% local match. This is an Ulster County Department of Public Works project. Yep. Ed, do you have any other comments regarding the project? No, it's just it's an older bridge. It was I think the construction of the superstructure was back in '39, and it's just we had done some rehab work in '92. Got your money's worth. But now it's time to totally replace it. The SLA agreement has come to the county. I think it's gone back to the state to their signature, and we're in the process of selecting a consultant. And once again, regarding our um, amendment procedures, it's a new addition to the TIP, which requires a full amendment and approval of the policy committee after public review. Any questions? Any comments? Hearing none, any opposed? Just, oh, okay. Um, my apologies. That's okay. Turning my back to you. Um, any abstentions? So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item B on the agenda. It's an update process for the 2023-2027 UCTC Transportation Improvement Program, otherwise known as the TIP and Draft NISDOT Region 8 Capital Program. We're not sure that's available. Um, Ryan? Sure, I would like to note an update to the agenda that I don't believe the capital program is available and we weren't expecting the presentation this morning. This is a carryover from the old. <laughs> yeah. And also at the bottom of the agenda, it says the NISDOT tip update guidance has not been released. That is not accurate as well. That is a copy and paste carryover mistake of my own. We do have the guidance. The guidance uh, tip update guidance was um, submitted to the State Association of MPOs in March, uh, along with our fiscal targets. So what I'm going to do this morning is briefly walk all of our members through um, our proposed process for working toward a, an updated transportation improvement program. Um, the TIP is typically updated every two to three years. So this is a very routine process. What is not routine uh, this time around is the time period that the MPOs across the state have to update the TIP. We typically would begin the process sometime in the autumn of the previous year, work through the winter with our local sponsors to update project costs and schedules. But because we just received the guidance and our fiscal targets, which I'll explain in a moment, we're really working on a very compressed time frame. And therefore, I'm, what I'm laying out uh, this morning is how we address that compressed time frame to assure that we have an approved tip uh, effective by October 1st, 2023 
and approved by the policy board no later than July 18th, which is what NISDOT has requested us to do. And I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Uh, Dave, could you go on to the next slide? Very briefly, for those of you who might uh, require a refresher, what is the Transportation Improvement Program? It's the capital program that assigns all of our federal funds available in Ulster County for highway bridge, bike and path, trail projects, pedestrian transit, and demand management projects for implementation over the course of the next five years. TIPS by law must be fiscally constrained in that they are not simply a wish list of capital projects that we would hope to accomplish over that period of time. We must demonstrate that there are sufficient federal and local dollars available to um, design and complete the projects that are listed on a transportation improvement program. Uh, next slide, Dave. I will provide members uh, at our next technical committee meeting a much more detailed overview of the transportation improvement program. It is not yet drafted. Um, what I'm providing this morning is, again, um, what I feel is the uh, appropriate procedure in order to get to a draft transportation improvement program under a condensed time frame. Right now in New York State, uh, all 14 uh, metropolitan planning organizations statewide are going through this identical process, uh, updating existing projects against their uh, new revised fiscal targets, that's dollars made available to us for the new period. For the rural areas that are outside of an MPO, they are working with their regional departments of transportation with any federal projects that might be um, existing in the rural areas. Together, all of our individual transportation improvement programs roll up with the rural areas into what's known as the state transportation improvement program, the STIP. Uh, the STIP operates under a four-year federal fiscal period, and TIPS uh, operate under a five-year federal fiscal period, with the outlying year being generally illustrated um, for the most part, those projects that if there are, are any listed in that final year. Um, and the federal fiscal years that we'll be dealing with during this TIP update process are 2023, that, which begins October 1st of this year through 2027 are the new TIP years. Next slide, please, Dave. So the big thing that MPOs wait for are our fiscal targets. Those are the dollars that we would expect to have available to us uh, in addition to what is already programmed on the TIP in the uh, new updated TIP years. This, is, uh, this document is available on the TIP page that is on the UCTC website, along with the TIP update guidance, which is a brief document that walks us through all the steps we need to follow to update the TIP. And it shows the dollars that we can expect at UCTC. And this shows all of the MPOs within the Mid-Hudson Valley, um, the dollars that are available to us. I've circled in red what the UCTC should expect. There are two main sources of funding that are shown on this table. STBG Flex, which stands for Surface Transportation Block Grant Flex Program. The flex dollars uh, can be spent on virtually any surface transportation project, I believe. Um, they're eligible to be, they have, as the name implies, they're very flexible in how they're used and highly sought after uh, because of that. Uh, we have what this table shows here in the first column in blue, you'll see um, for UCTC a figure seven point, it's a little difficult to read on the screen in person, it's $7.3 million. That's considered to be a rollover fund. So those are funds that are already approved on our existing TIP that we would expect to be able to carry through into the new TIP period. Um, and so these are uh, all active projects that have funding programmed already, 7.3 million. This is a, an estimate. It's a pretty close, est at, fairly accurate estimate as far as we know, but these are moving targets that we're dealing with. Um, they, uh, we are constantly doing amendments to the TIP, so it can be difficult to establish a really fine grained uh, estimate as to what the rollover is. But I think by the end of this week in working with local projects unit, uh, Nicole Farmer 
and other staff will have a much better sense of what the actual uh, rollover amount is, but it's pretty close to 7.3 million. In addition, we have a funding fiscal target under STP Flex, and that is $1 million per year. We would have in addition to what's already programmed for the, the TIP period. So to, for flex or is that for oil? That's just for flex, Thank $1 you. million dollars per year. Yeah. The other primary fu federal fund source is the STBG off-system bridge program, which I think many of us are familiar with. We just did an amendment to the TIP that I believe used off-system bridge funds. That ref off-system refers to the federal highway system. So these are for bridges generally in rural areas that are not located on the federal highway system. For STBG off-system bridge funds, we will be rolling, anticipate rolling um, just under half a million dollars in federal funds, 439,702. And we have an, a, a target for the new uh, five-year program of just over $1.2 million per year during the uh, program period. Those are the only two uh, uh, federal fund areas that we would expect to receive it for UCTC during the TIP update cycle. Go ahead to our next slide, Dave. Any questions before I start to get into the next step? So typically um, the process for updating the TIP, it, it is outlined in our operating procedures and we would typically form a TIP subcommittee. It's a subcommittee of the technical committee. Because we have such a constrained uh, time period for conducting the update, and since we have so few projects on the TIP, we have already begun the TIP update uh, process by reaching out to all of our local sponsors, welcome John, um, who have projects on the TIP to get updated costs and schedules. We will use those figures to then um, compare against the dollars available to see where we're at. So the projects that are shown, um, as you can see, there are not very many. I've, I've broken them down into two primary areas. The first is the STBG Flex program and the projects that are programmed on our TIP. So I've reached out to, starting at the top, Ulster County Department of Public Works has the uh, County Route 78 shoulder widening project that's Route 299 in the towns of New Paltz and Gardner. DPW has indicated that they, we know that they have programmed for construction 5.4 million. These are all federal funds only shown here. They are going to require an additional 1.7 million in order to complete that project. And they're currently in the right of way phase. So this is how the table reads. Existing, what is existing funds programmed on the tip versus how much more in addition these local sponsors would require in order to complete the project. Route 209 sidewalk improvements, that's the town of Waworsing project in Kerhonkson, indicated they will require an additional 6.2 million in federal funds. 6.2 million or I'm sorry, 0.6 million, I misspoke. That is correct point, it's 600,000, 622,000. Out of what's currently there. And what is currently there is 680,000, so nearly double uh, due to the prolonged schedule on that project. Most of these projects are nearly through right of way and through design. Route 213 uh, bridge in Tongor, or the Tongor Creek Bridge. This is a, one of the few bridges that uses STBG Flex on our program. Um, we just needed to update the schedule for that project. DPW indicated that it is sufficiently funded at 1.6 million. Tilson Ave, town of Lloyd. Mm. This project is uh, scheduled to commence in federal fiscal year 22. That is this current federal fiscal year. Bids Thank have been received. That's right. Thank you. And bids um, uh, go, they, they did a, a bid base bid process, which is uh, somewhat new to me, um, but it provides uh, some flexibility in getting a range of bids back from the, uh, the firms that show um, doing the bare minimum at the location versus what was intended through the design. Um, long story short, 
the consultants have indicated based on the bids received that that project will require an additional $2.1 million. Um, and it is important to note also that um, our fiscal targets for the new TIP period begin in 2023, the next federal fiscal year. We, if we are able to use dollars against our target, that is another discussion that we will need to have with uh, New York State Department of Transportation Region 8 on our ability to do that if the council feels it's appropriate to utilize those funds for that project. Um, Kingston Rail Trail, this is a uh, Ulster County project. They had, had 4.7 total right now. That's, um, I want to start agreeing on uh, actual numbers unless I have the tip in front of me. Okay. But they have STBG large urban funds, 3 million programmed, along with quite a few other STBG funds. Thank you, Brian. I'm funds. sorry. Yep. Yeah. Um, Kingston Rail Trail, in the uh, that is the extension from the uh, city of Kingston to the town of Hurley, uh, being um, project being managed by Ulster County Planning Department requires an additional um, 457,000. DNH Canal ONW Rail Trail, town of Warsing, requires an additional 870,000 for that um, important segment in the town. Um, and finally, Wilbur Ave Repaving, city of Kingston. Um, we, it looks like we will push obligation to 2023, although I'll um, continue to work with the city of Kingston if they're able to um, receive bids in this federal fiscal year, we may be able to honor that current schedule and they did not request additional funds. So long story short on the STP flex program portion of our tip, we're finding that there are needs of 5.8 million in federal funds. Um, be, so that's definitely above what our fiscal target was at five million. And that's in the Brian, first can I can I add some more in there? This is Neil from the um, town let of me, let, Before you do, Neil, because I, I suspect it's regarding the HW uh, Du Bois project. Yeah. One point regarding the tip update and the uh, update for projects. There's what we refer to as the core highway program, and these are core projects. There are quite a few other projects on the transportation improvement program. Transit projects aside, we do have um, discretionary projects that were awarded through the transportation alternatives program. We are not able to provide additional funds for transportation alternative program funding or other discretionary projects. We're open to schedule changes for those projects, but we are not able to provide additional funding for the discretional, discretionary and, projects. And that's a policy issue that comes out when you make the application. That effectively what you have is what you get. And it's awarded on a competitive basis and because of budget is taken into account, uh, what ends up happening is they, they will, they basically indicate that they won't, they won't allow us to provide additional funding yet. Um, that doesn't mean we, we can't try, but it certainly, certainly is not within the, within the scope where we are now. Yeah, we don't know yet because we haven't gone out to bid, but we're worried about the supply chain issues um, and inflation and everything else. I think that that's what you're seeing on some of these other projects. So I don't know where you are in the bid process, but you could get an engineering estimate and see where you are. Yeah, right now we, we're still under budget, but you know, when the bids come back, we'll see what happens. Okay. That's Dave, the problem. No. yeah. And that's the problem that all these projects are facing. It's definitely a difficult period of time to be advancing federal aid projects. Sorry to interrupt, Brian. You no, it's five, fine. 5.8 million is additional. Yeah, and these are these are our best estimates at this point in time. Um, 5.8 million in additional uh, needs for existing projects. So if we were to advance and provide the requests that we've received, um, we would be going over our fiscal target. And that's also assuming if we're able to use funds within our 2023-27 target in this current federal fiscal year. So those are some big ifs. So the summary here is, is we have about $5.8 million in additional federal money out of a $5 million allocation over five years. We're proposing on this update, it looks like we're proposing to use it over two years. 
which would leave them the next two years of the TIP or the three years of the TIP with no funding whatsoever. Um, if that's the case, and if NYSDOT agrees, we move that forward. So that's where we are looking to try to essentially no new projects and just funding existing projects. Any comments? Why don't we go on to the next uh, slide, Dave? The next slide shows our bridge program, which is uh, does not include as many bridges. We have four bridges. Off system, right? Uh, these are all off system bridge. Right. Yeah, STBG off system bridge projects. So we have three DPW projects uh, being um, sponsored by Ulster County DPW and one by the village of Ellenville. Um, the first one is Clinton Ave Bridge in Ellenville. So we have moved that project um, due to um, design delays out to 2023, and they have requested an additional um, 400,000 in uh, federal aid. Then uh, we have two other projects that have been in design by DPW for a number of years uh, that require additional funding, 79,000 and 418,000 for those Fantine Kill and Wolven bridges. 79,000? 79,000, that's Thank right. Yeah, sorry. That's fine. Um, then finally, <clears throat> I think most members may recall when we, uh, we did do a call for projects in calendar year 2020, if I recall correctly, we received two responses, one from the town of Rochester, the other from Ulster County for the Scudderbrook Bridge. The town of Rochester Bridge uh, eventually was uh, was awarded our funding, but we waited to see and asked them to apply to Bridge New York. That bridge was awarded Bridge New York funding, which included a slightly better deal at 5% local share. So we are now going to award the leftover funds to the Scudder Brook Bridge Ulster County project. That will be a new project on the tip. Um, we are looking to get project estimates on that now um, and Andrew Emmerich will get those to me when they become available. I just guesstimated somewhere in the vicinity of 1.5 to 2 million in federal funds might re be required. That's what's in the capital program account. It wasn't guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, it, it's not entirely clear to me. I need to go through the my spreadsheets and compare with what we have at New York State DOT but we may have additional funds remaining on our off-system bridge program that would allow us to do a call for projects and fund potentially one, maybe two more bridges uh, going forward in the TIP cycle. And we would, I would hope to do that call for projects at the end of this year, if we are able to. So I'm estimating somewhere in the vicinity of two and a half to 3 million in federal aid remaining for the off-system bridge program. Thank you, Brian. Any questions, any comments? Um, I just have one last slide to run through what the process for approval is. Again, I indicated that we have a very condensed schedule here. Um, so I took the initiative to get these estimates and provide them to the policy board in advance of developing the draft tip. And what I think, what I would propose that um, we do in order to address the schedule is come to some sort of consensus today that we have an appropriate schedule for and process for updating this tip and move to develop a draft transportation improvement program that would uh, acknowledge all of these project needs and pull them into the updated transportation improvement program that we would present to the technical committee at the May meeting of the technical committee. If the technical, if this board agrees that that's a prudent course forward, then the tech committee would be given the tip in advance, just like any other resolution. And um, it would require 15 day public comment period. It also requires a public meeting. Um, in, a, in addition to the typical uh, meeting cycle that we have through the tech and policy boards, so we would do a standalone present public presentation of the tip during uh, May or early June. And that would be during, that would typically kick off the 15 day public comment period. And given um, any, unless there are any other outstanding issues that would set us up for a 
full approval of the TIP by the end of June at the June policy board meeting. So that would really be a rapid um, schedule for approval. But as you can see, um, there are no significant additions to the TIP well, during this time. We don't time. know that because we still haven't seen what NYSDOT is proposing for our project. And that's a big hole right now. Correct. It, 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 that schedule is contingent upon receiving the NYSDOT capital program. Um, it would need to be received by mid mid May when we draft the uh, the first draft of the tip. Any questions? And NISDOT has indicated in its update um, guidance that um, tips statewide they would like to have approved um, by all MPOs no later than July eighteenth. Yes. Is the bridge on Legs Mills Road going over the Asopus Creek on anybody's radar for repairs or anything? Has anybody thought about that? It's in pretty rough shape. No, we got that. It's in the pipeline on the Camden. So it's in the Camden. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's got a water line on it now. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking to, we're, we started looking at it for substructures and we're also looking at it for the possibility of replacing the deck at the same time. We've already done bearings and ends of the beams and everything a few years back. But it's in the pipeline. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks, Ed. Brian, the. Uh, <clears throat> and I may be confused as to the, the funding source. So the programs that were called for a couple of years ago, you know, Rochester and Gardner shared and put in the, the 4455 quarter study. And I know the OW for. Uh, signage and things are they part of this tip or is that no stuff? That's stuff those are plan those are planning plan projects okay. that are in our current approved unified planning work program okay they are not on deck uh and we would probably like to move one maybe two more projects forward this year planning projects and those do have funding and uh, can go forward okay but this is just for the capital side of and then second question. So the, the Bridge New York projects are a part of the TIP automatically because of the Bridge New York? That's right. The what, federal funds. That's yeah. Right. Okay. And, you know, there there was a relatively small number of projects shown here. Those are not all the projects on the TIP. Okay. And I, I apologize if that wasn't clear. Um, it e can sometimes be easy to forget, especially as we really get into the weeds on some of these local projects. There are quite a few other projects that will be on the new TIP. Um, that are being rolled or carried through. And those include New York State DOT projects, um, as well as some highway safety improvement program, uh, rail safety projects, um, transportation alternatives program projects that are currently in design. Hopefully some new uh, TAP awards that we would expect to receive the announcement for TAP awards coming uh, relatively soon. There may be a project in Ulster County, maybe two. Um, our entire transit program is not mentioned here. We're meeting with the Ulster County Area Transit tomorrow to develop their plan of projects. Um, but all those projects would need to be in the draft tip at the main meeting so that the technical committee can review those projects and then decide whether to approve that draft document. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Brian, you, uh, you mentioned the tap. Um, hold on a second. Hold on. One moment, Neil. Neil. Go ahead, Neil. Um, so we've been trying to, we have a TAP application in. Um, and so you, um, any, we're hoping to hear any day now, but we have no idea where did you hear this and uh, can, or are you just hoping that we're going to hear any day? Well, the, the announcement for the TAP awards will come out this spring. I don't know if Ulster County will, there were two awards, as I, or two awards, there are two proposals from Ulster County. One was from the planning department for the UND corridor, and the other was from the town of New Paltz. Um, yeah. and I, for, I forget the, and that was for the bridge on the um, Welcome Valley Rail Trail. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And we also we, we put an ask into Delgado for the same project. Great. Uh, and we did as well uh, from the planning department. We submitted a request to Delgado's office for supplemental funds, what have been referred to as the congressional member items um, to provide funding for the 299 shoulders project. So if that were to be 
carry through and awarded, we would potentially have some additional STP flex fund funding on the tip. And so we're, we're like, I was just wondering, we're, you're curious because we got to get moving on that. So thanks, sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Thank, that's perfectly appropriate question. Sandra, have you heard any updates on the TAP award? I imagine that's at the governor's office and they're controlling the timing of that announcement. It's convenient. Yeah. But wouldn't it have to be before May 18th? It would ideally. No, well, ideally. We would amend it. We would amend it. That's what right. we're doing now with I, New York programs. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. We we will have uh, an additional amendment to the existing transportation improvement program before the end of the federal fiscal year. The uh, FTA section fifty three ten program. There is a, uh, a call for projects out right now. Ulster County has. There are several applications that I'll be reviewing this week, and we need to have those on the approved tip this year. So um, it's it's very much a moving target and a uh, a a, uh, a living document. This is, uh, so, I, any any other questions from council members? Comments? I think those are all my slides. Dave, was there any other on the presentation? I think that's it. Thank you. So I just I have just a couple of comments. One is the fact is if you recall that uh, there was a great deal of uh, celebration and, and um, anticipation that when the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act were passed, that there was a whole lot of money coming down uh, from the state uh, from the from the feds to the state um, to deal with um, infrastructure issues. Um, I will tell you that the current allocations uh, to Ulster County have been this way for at least three tip cycles. Uh, and I want you to think what's happened to the cost of projects. Uh, so we're looking at $5 million over five years that we've been around now for somewhere in the neighborhood of almost eight years or 10 years. Um, and you can't meet federal requirements with respect to performance measures at a million dollars a year. It's just, it's just not doable. Uh, and I think we need to have a discussion about how the Transportation Council can meet its performance goals um, in, terms of, in terms of what is happening on the federal aid system, which is not just state roads, um, with essentially this type of allocation. Um, the other thing I would think is, is that we need to have some insight into the department's capital program in terms of what its expenditures are going to be in Ulster County. And so we've asked in the past to have a presentation of the capital program. And I'm gonna ask again today is when would we expect to get a presentation of the capital program for I think the region for the three transportation councils um, so that it's timely with respect to the tip. Yes. The presentation is done. I heard what you said. I heard what you That's asked great. for. I took it to heart. The presentation is done. Um, it's going through the review process. And as soon as our capital program, which has been recommended for approval, as soon as it is officially approved, and I should get the green light for the presentation. So uh, you, know, when, you can put me on the a, agenda for May. Do we have a schedule? Would it be for May? Well, let's put it on for May. I mean, I have no control over. <laughs> Actually, you know, but I mean, let's. There's, you know, there's a lot going on. So, I of course, very hopeful and optimistic that by your next meeting, we can get your presentation. And I would just like to comment that we've um, tried to develop a schedule that uh, meets with um, NISDOT's needs that uh, recognizes uh, we need to move this through quickly. Oh yeah. And so we're trying, we're trying our best to meet it. So no we would. So I would think that you know, mm -hmm. May, next meeting, you we, know, would, we would like to do the, the, the whole TMA. We could do it all by Zoom and get all the three transportation councils together and do a presentation for them. We don't get to say about this presentation. It's not that long. <laughs> it's not that glamorous. <clears throat> Everything that you just said about Costa County and your high school about planning target and all of that. Is exactly the same, you know, the skill that we do. So, but um, yeah, if you want to, you know, but, but literally, I think it's 
Like under 15 years. Okay. It's not something to think about. Yeah, I try to sort of keep your attention. Nice big picture. You know, he did it. He did need good attention. So, um, I don't know. You can think about that. So, I'd like to talk to you offline about how we're yeah. going to deal with the multi county problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I know that there's a, there's generally been a ton of money in multi, multi county. And we can just real quick, I can give you our overall approach and see that's going to change. We do have um, uh, maintenance projects that are regional, but they cross the impact for different entities and the rural area. Mm -hmm. And what we do for TIP purposes, we put those um, multi potential county projects all on the NIMPIC, NIPPS assessment, that's where they're at. And then as we identify candidates, we will move those projects depending on where they're in. But we are always. Um, you know, back in the office, we have formulas to basically take into consideration how many counties each, you know, the number of bridge decks in each county, the number of lane miles, you know, population, all that kind of stuff. So we have targets for ourselves and how much we need to invest in Ulster County, how much we need to invest in, you know, let's say Westchester County. Um, and, and that's how we approach those multi county projects. And we start programming their location. Otherwise, everything would end up in the southern part of this region, right? So we have to be very careful about, you know, we're doing that. And we take that very seriously. And you guys see that because you'll see projects that the location information changes and we have to make shifts with projects. I think we have a really robust paving program too. And we're always taking into consideration locations. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. We just program stuff up to a problem. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I think the leading for in our bridge program, we're trying to be very conscientious about the entire bridge bridge, even though the dollars will sit in the beginning of the tip cycle, all in mid Hudson mm -hmm. okay. But okay. in that presentation I had, it doesn't get into where projects sit in the tip. It talks about more regionally, so I take that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's internal deny stock for approval because you have a budget and you have a state budget. Right. State mostly for the state. Yeah. yeah. So you have that. So it's, it's, it must be. I know I know the capital region has their has their capital program. Capital region NPO has their capital program. So one would presume that we would have something short. They, they have it probably recommended approved, but they don't have. No one has it hasn't the whole state has not been signed off on it. So they probably have to come together. We would we would take the recommended for approval. Okay. We would have to have something that is actually approved. Okay. And then to go back to our own tip, just I want everyone to remember that we are somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, about eight hundred thousand short. Uh, with everything packed into the first uh, two fiscal years, which is problematic. So just be aware of that. This kind of reminds me, though. I feel like we were in this exact, exact same situation last year, and we did. So I, I can almost guarantee it was so incredibly similar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and most of these projects are in a much better place than they were several years ago, even with. The pandemic related issues. Uh, I'm I'm going to remain optimistic that we're going to be able to move these projects through to construction. You guys do an amazing job. Just, just, yep. Just agreed. Putting it all together. Thank it's you. Like, man. Well, we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it around first. <laughs> no, no, no. They're the ones that do all the work. Yeah. Okay. But so any. Thank you. Any other questions for people on the phone? Hearing none, we'll move on. Other old business project updates? I just have uh, three project updates. Um, Dave, do you want to give a brief update on the count program since we got you here? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
our count program, we're anticipating counts coming out this spring. I think I have about 90 counts uh, programmed throughout the county. And this is kind of picking back up on the, on the traffic count program that we've uh, held off on doing just due to pandemic numbers and you know finding utility in those counts. Um, traffic contractor tried to get, get some counts out during spring break, but uh, we opted not to do them then just to ensure that we're getting accurate numbers without need for a lot of adjustment. Um, but we have, so keep an eye out for letters to come out if there's gonna be counts in your municipality, we'll let you know where they're gonna be and when we're anticipating doing them. And we'll just check to make sure that there's no issues with construction or anything like that um, in your municipality. So be posted. And if you have any uh, traffic count needs uh, for projects, um, please let us know. And we can try to get them added into rotation, or see you know see where the the data is as far as um, how recent it was conducted. Neil, you had a question. Sorry to keep interrupting. So just so I'm clear, the the we have I know yesterday I noticed maybe four different counters in town, a um, Henry W on two ninety nine, and I guess I I was gonna email today but i thought i'd ask that's not from the county that that's probably from a planning board project or someone else could, yeah it could be the state or it could be um, a local count but right as of now the contractor is not giving us up put out sheets we have not done our notification process for local municipalities so they should not be our accounts okay um, most likely dot yeah it's property of tri tri straight tri state traffic data that, that's our traffic count contractor that we also use, um, state uses as well. Okay. Jay, Mike, Mike Baden, um, several people, residents in Rochester told me maybe a month ago, they had seen counters out on roads that probably, or they were near bridge, one was near a bridge and one, one was on a county road. Would that have been county or? Most likely the state. Um, Most likely the state. Okay. Yeah. So they they do sampling of of basically all a lot of you know all the roads and you, sometimes you'll see counts on like dead end streets even and you know you'll feel like why are they doing these and it, it's okay. part of the sampling system. But so we usually supplement the state counts um, just to get a more kind of complete uh, coverage, as it were, in you know some areas that we're looking for counts as well. And then we provide the data to the state and we take their data as well and we get more area covered. Okay. Well, we definitely appreciate the notice because I can tell you that within an hour of those being out, I was getting numerous phone calls asking what the project was and right. I knew nothing about it. So we definitely appreciate it. Exactly. And that's why it's one of the reasons I didn't want to do the spring break ones. They were like, we can do counts tomorrow. And it was, it was, I was like, you know, I didn't get a chance to notify anyone and, you know, we'd have to deal with the school and yeah. So we try to get those out with, with the map and, and locations. Um, I may even just send the locations around tentatively and then do the schedules later, just so you have an idea of where we're, where we're looking. Great, thank you. Yep. Other project updates? Uh, do, sorry, was there another question? That's what I was gonna ask you. I was just gonna say, do you have any other project updates? Uh, we are continuing to make progress through the Ulster County Transportation Vulnerability Assessment, sometimes referred to as our re resiliency study. And I look forward to being able to provide um, some online updates on our inventory of uh, transportation assets. What this, what this process does is look at all transportation assets in Ulster County and compare it to potential threats, primarily natural disasters, um, but also some man-made threats. And then taking a look at beginning to prioritize which assets might be at greatest risk and what might have the most uh, potential impact on uh, mobility in Ulster County if they were to be impacted. Um, that's the very short explanation of the vulnerability assessment. And we are using an ArcGIS hub component to present some of those major findings and we'll be able to show you some preliminary findings very soon. And we have two responses to our, uh, our railroad study, rail safety study in the city of Kingston. We have two responses to that. Technical team's coming along, right, Dave, the review team? Yes, I think I just got a uh, final re re review member added in yesterday. 
Uh, so we'll be circulating those RFPs around and um, doing the review. So we'd like to get a contract uh, consulted under contract by June. And then also the 9W corridor management plan in the town of Ulster, we have a contractor um, under contract or that contract has not yet been approved? Not yet, uh, should be short. But it's moving through the legislative yeah. process. Yeah. Um, and so we will be uh, beginning that project this year as well. Those are all the planning studies that we currently have uh, underway. And I hope to be able to add maybe one more before the close of the year. Uh, NYSERDA Ulster Connect Phase 1 Award. Dennis, do you want to sure. that Sure, uh, thank you. Uh, NYSERDA is, is, um, has something called a Clean Neighborhood Challenge. Um, and NYSERDA essentially put out a request for proposals for um, an electric uh, microtransit system, an all-electric microtransit system. NYSERDA operates solely with respect to private sector. Uh, the private sector that asked Ulster County to partner with them is a company called VIA. Um, and VIA have submitted the application for what they call phase one, which is the planning phase. Um, the county's partner with that essentially looked at providing microtransit service in the city of Kingston, as well as uh, the um, greater Ellenville area. Uh, and we're also taking a short look to see whether or not um, there's any possibility of microtransit in in uh, new faults, although it wasn't part of the original application. And part of that has to do is with that was we were dealing with qualified census tracts uh, in low and moderate income areas. And even though I knew faults qualifies primarily because of the student population, uh, we didn't look at that area as, uh, the, the VIA didn't look at that area as being that promising, but we'll, we'll take another look at it right now. Um, microtransit is, is literally, um, something like, it's almost like uh, dial a ride or demand response, uh, only the technology has improved significantly so that the anticipation is, is that you would be able to essentially uh, request a bus and it would be there within two to three hours rather than essentially 24 hours. Um, that's how the process would work. It would connect you to destinations within those areas or connect you to the major bus system routes that UCAT currently runs. We are currently in outreach uh, right now, and we have a presentation to make to NYSERDA uh, by June, uh, or actually May, I believe, um, with respect to phase two. If we are awarded phase two, it's a $10 million pilot demonstration grant. Um, and, the, and we would essentially, VIA would, essentially do a turnkey system to provide microtransit. Uh, in the areas that we're currently looking at. Um, the key in those areas is the, in the, in the outreach is the areas that uh, would be served. And the areas that we're looking at in the city of Kingston essentially goes south in the, in the Osopus and north up towards the Hudson Valley Mall and beyond. It also extends out, uh, Kristen Wilson was mentioning the Repco project. We wanted to make sure it extended out into those areas as well. And in the, and in the Ellenville area, it would extend uh, south from Ellenville into the, into the resort sector, as well as north from Ellenville up into the areas where Walmart is and the prison is up in, that, in those areas as well. Um, we think we have a strong application. We have a 50-50% chance uh, in terms of the number of people that were chosen. So uh, we, we hope, to be able to move, hope to be able to move forward. Uh, there are surveys online for people in those areas. There are surveys online that you can, that you can just go to Ultra Connect uh, that you can fill out. Um, and we've completed uh, one of our public meetings and looking to maybe hold a second one with respect to a Zoom meeting, we did an in-person meeting. It was really well attended in the city of Kingston uh, with respect to with respect to VIA. So we're, we're cautiously optimistic and hope that we, we end up being funded. And then the, the challenge is gonna be what happens when the funds run out. <laughs> but, um, but the main thing is, is that uh, it is private sector. The current concern in terms of moving forward, we're probably not looking to essentially, even if awarded, be able to begin service till 2023. Um, and what the current concern right now is, even though this is an all electric system, basically under the NYSERDA idea that we're, it's cleaner, it's, it's clean neighborhood, um, they really don't make a vehicle that's an all electric vehicle to 
provide those services. So the company is, v is, a, is a nationwide company, very large company. Um, and so they're, we're scouring around right now to look to see what appropriate vehicles exist um, that, is, that are available for microtransit that are beyond, that are larger than a van and smaller than a bus. Uh, if you think of it that way. Any questions? Brian, anything you want to add to that? There will be focus groups are being held Thank this you. week as well yeah. for individuals that signed up uh, with the public outreach coordinator in both communities. You gave the traffic safety board update? Uh, I'll give it right now. It's brief. The um, traffic yeah. safety board meets on the first Monday of the month at 6 p.m. These are hybrid meetings held in the legislative chambers and online. Uh, the main meeting will need to be canceled. Uh, that would have been May 2nd because I will be attending the Walk Bike New York Symposium, um, my first conference in many years, <laughs> it seems, which is great news, uh, in Rochester, New York, uh, my old hometown as well. So I will be doing some walking tours and uh, hearing some great presentations on pedestrian bicycle safety and planning for pedestrian bicycle uh, systems in our communities. So for those of the council that don't know this, the county executive recommended an appointment and the legislature has confirmed it. Brian is now the traffic safety coordinator for the county. So congratulations or condolences on how that works. But um, Brian, um, if I can unofficially extend an invitation and I'll check Kevin Smith, but the, the Ulster County Trails Advisory Council would probably love you to come present maybe after you go to this conference, um, things that you came out of that conference uh, at one of the series. Certainly, we have a, a number of individuals from the greater Kingston area are attending. Tom Polk, our, our bike, bicycle coordinator at the YMCA. He's also a TSB member. Um, Lou Kleppner, uh, who is um, a TSB member from Saugerties. And Kevin May, we're trying to get Kevin to attend okay. as well. And, and a few and city of Kingston employees. It's a well. topic you talk about almost every meeting. So. I'd be happy to attend. And those meetings are held uh, entirely third, virtually? No, or? We're, we're, we're in person third Monday in the legislative. Right, chamber. and that's on the, in case you weren't aware, between Dennis, Amanda Laval, uh, and myself, that it's routinely on our calendars and we try to decide when it's appropriate to attend right now. But I, I'd be more than happy to attend. And the second Monday is the week to go. Oh, can I? Is that an official invitation? As official as I can. Be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Laura Petit, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we can reach out to Laura and, and uh, as chair. But we uh, have had um, very active agendas uh, since the beginning of the year at the Traffic Safety Board. There are a lot of topics, a lot of pressing topics, particularly with regard to. Um, the New York State Legislature and Safe Streets Initiative, which is a bundle of new laws that are being proposed that have not yet passed. They would address everything from speed limits in New York State communities to additional funding for complete streets projects um, and a variety of other issues related to um, civil law and uh, vehicle and traffic law as it pertains to uh, crashes and traffic safety. Also, the, all the data and planning that we do here at the Transportation Council. We've been trying to provide presentations to our members as well. So we feel strongly that we'd like to use a data-driven approach to traffic safety. And now at the federal level, there's the safe systems approach, which at some point we would love to give an overview of what that is, particularly after I learn more about what it is, but it is uh, taking a new approach at the federal level down to the state level and trying to reduce crashes, which have been on the rise in recent years during the pandemic after many decades of declines. So that's a major concern of the federal administration. Anything else? Anything else from the council members? Dennis, um, this is, and it might've been under project updates, we kind of went by. So just cause I'm new to the whole bridge New York process, we submitted our paperwork to the state. Um, we, we put out a request for qualifications to the to the people uh, to the agencies on uh, the firms on the list. We got back six replies, and and we're reviewing those at this time. 
I'm, I'm still, and maybe this is better offline, but I'm still sort of figuring out where we go, what next steps are. Sure. How long does it take to hear back from the DOT? I'm signing off uh, as soon as I've got you know, anxiousness on when the grant expires. I want to make sure we're, we're moving forward in the right amount of time frame. Yeah, I reached directly into the local projects mm -hmm. unit, and we, we can help. We've done, we've done okay. enough time. I can, help, I can follow I up directly. We that. sent them the paperwork yeah, a month ago. Yeah, then you should follow up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and hopefully, two or three times the time project manager, and they can start working with someone okay. and have a point of contact. And, and just a, this was probably a, a, an update, but I want to thank the DOT for their bridge in Ackward uh, over. 209 uh, on Route 209. We had our first major flood event, I think, since it's been there. And uh, not only did we not even come close to flooding at the bridge, we also didn't flood at further the, at the corner, at the corner yeah. where everybody yeah. predicted we would flood and uh, got quite a few people who reached out and aware of that. The people that were questioning why that bridge was so high saw why it was so high because the water was only about two feet below the top of it. Wow. And, uh, but it didn't flood, 209 stayed open and that decreased a major impact in our community. So just- uh, That was a great program and project. That it works. It was a critical bridge or, you know, for yeah, water. Yeah, it was a DRI. Plan. And we had amazing yeah. and I mean, many people question the height of that bridge and why do we need it that high? Why do we need it that high? And I said, because that is the flood stage. Any, thank you, Brian, uh, um, Mike. Any, any other comments? Any closing remarks? Going once? Uh, when is the next meeting? Next meeting is May 24th. And that will May be a hybrid before. meeting. Yeah. Uh, before that, I will be retiring. So I oh. won't be attending the meeting. Well, I hope you can assign someone new, Lizzie. Congratulations. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank Enjoy. you. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. You're going to retire. Thanks, Lizzie. <laughs> Take care. OK. Thank you, everyone. Have a, have a great um, Memorial Day, right? <clears throat> we'll, meet before before that. That. we'll see you before that. That's right. That's right. We, okay. we stand adjourned. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, so